The Untold Story of Kratos Part 1 This is the first installment in a series that will cover the entire history of Kratos. In this video, we will be covering Kratos' early life and his rise to power as a god. Born in Sparta, Kratos was a respected soldier and a Spartan general, up until he lost his wife and daughter when he killed them, albeit by accident under Ares' command, earning him the nickname of the Ghost of Sparta, after which he renounced his service to the war god, eventually killing him and ascending to godhood by becoming the new god of war, before exacting revenge against his father, the Olympians and the Titans who betrayed him. After successfully exacting his vengeance, Kratos escaped into the world of Norse gods by settling down in Midgard in ancient Norway where he married another woman named Faye and bore a son named Atreus who together, after the boy's mother's death, would embark on a journey to spread her ashes at the highest peak of all the nine realms. But let's start at the beginning. Kratos was once a child. Like all Spartan youth, Kratos was monitored and trained for combat by the Spartan authorities, those who were deemed fit were to stay and be trained as Spartan warriors, while those who were deemed unfit would be sent to the mountains, probably Mount Gitos, to fend for themselves. Already feisty and aggressive at a young age, Kratos trained together with his younger brother, Deimos, as they dreamed of joining the Spartan army when they grew up. Around this time, Zeus began to hear prophecies foretelling his demise at the hands of one of his sons, a marked warrior. Hoping to circumvent the cycle of patricide before it was too late, Zeus sent Ares and Athena to hunt down and dispose of the boy who would one day rise up against him. Ares, noticing Deimos' strange birthmarks, decided to invade Sparta with an army of centaurs and take him to Thanatos, the god of death. Kratos tried to save his brother, but Ares punched him into a pile of wood, leaving him with a permanent scar over his right eye. Insulted by the mortal's defiance, Ares prepared to kill the young Spartan but was stopped by Athena. The goddess reminded Ares that they had what they were looking for, and apologized to Kratos before disappearing into the flames. The loss of his brother left an indelible mark on Kratos, as he vowed to never falter again. In honor of his brother, Kratos had himself tattooed in the exact image of Deimos' birthmark. Kratos would later forget that it was Ares and Athena who took his brother from him and wouldn't realize it until after Ares' death. As Kratos came of age, he became a respected member of the Spartan army, eventually marrying Lysandra and siring a daughter, Calliope. Rising through the ranks of the Spartan army Shortly after her birth, Calliope contracted a plague, causing the Spartan authorities to deem her weak. Spartan lore required that she be thrown into a chasm and left to die. Determined to save his daughter, Kratos set out on a journey for the Ambrosia after hearing from an elder of its exceptional healing capabilities. But unbeknownst to Kratos, Ares had chosen him to be his champion in the Wager of the Gods, a contest with the ultimate goal being the capture of the Ambrosia, the victor would have statues erected in their honor all throughout Greece. A battalion of Spartans accompanied Kratos on his quest, including Captain Nikos. Along the way, he encountered a healer who gave him the flames of Apollo. Kratos eventually encountered Poseidon's champion, Herodias, and killed him as the Spartans conquered his army and stole their ship. Enraged at Kratos for costing him the wager, Poseidon unleashed a handful of hazards at sea in the hopes of killing him but failed. Later on, Kratos encountered Artemis' champion, Pothia, and killed her as well, with her army also falling victim to the Spartans, although Artemis did not retaliate. In fear that Kratos would defeat his champion, Ulrich, the barbarian king, Hades sent a torrent of fire through the sky. Although he failed to kill Kratos, he succeeded in killing many of Kratos' men, including Captain Nikos. As he found the Ambrosia, Kratos encountered Ceriaion, the Helios champion, and killed him as well. Ulrich and his barbarian army battled the Spartans for the Ambrosia, as Ulrich's father was very ill and in need of the elixir. After a grueling battle between the two leaders, Kratos successfully captured the Ambrosia at the cost of his own men and summoned an army of rocks to continuously torture Alric. Kratos then returned to Sparta and healed Calliope, obtaining the rank of captain from the king of Sparta. At some point after becoming captain, Kratos would command a young soldier named Atreus who remained hopeful even in the darkest times. When the day came for Atreus to lay down his life in battle, he did it without hesitation and saved many others, earning Kratos' respect. The captain carried Atreus home on the soldier's shield and personally buried him with full honors of Spartan custom, acknowledging him as the only Spartan who ever had a smile on his face even in battle. Birth of the Ghost As a general, Kratos won battles through brutal, but effective tactics. However, his pride and hunger for power grew greater with every victory. 
Despite Lysander's pleas, Kratos vowed to continue his bloody conquests until the glory of Sparta is known throughout the world, spending time with his family only when he was able to return to Sparta. Kratos and his army finally met their match when they encountered the merciless barbarian tribes from the east, led by Kratos' old enemy, Ulrich. Outnumbered and overpowered, the Spartans quickly found themselves on the losing end of the battle, with Kratos himself left at the mercy of Ulrich the barbarian king, who sought revenge against Kratos for inadvertently causing the death of his father. In desperation, Kratos called out to Ares, the god of war, pledging his allegiance in exchange for victory. Ares accepted the offer, proceeding to kill all of the barbarians, including Ulrich, and giving Kratos the Blades of Chaos as a sign of his servitude. For a time, Kratos served Ares loyally, raiding villages, slaughtering innocents, and spreading chaos in his name. Under the God of War's influence, Kratos became utterly ruthless and gradually lost any semblance of the humanity he once had. One day, during a raid on a village of Athena's followers, Ares secretly transported Lysandra and Calliope to a nearby temple. Ignoring the village oracle's warnings, Kratos entered the temple and slaughtered everybody inside in a fit of blind rage, including his wife and child, whom he believed were still in Sparta. Ares justified this as a means of severing Kratos' remaining attachments to the world of mortals, thereby molding him into the perfect warrior. Stricken with horror and grief at what he had done, Kratos left the bodies of his family to be burned within the temple, ultimately renouncing his allegiance to the god of war. The oracle cursed Kratos, forcing him to forever wear the ashes of his dead family on his skin. From that day forward, Kratos became known as the Ghost of Sparta, his skin now pale as the moon from the ashes that coated him. To other mortals, he was now marked by his ghostly white skin, the knowledge of his past actions often repulsed them to the point where they would rather die than allow him to save their lives. He became known as the personification of cruelty and selfishness. Word of this metamorphosis would spread even outside of Greece's Norse god and advisor to Odin, Mimir who would become a future ally to Kratos himself would later on instantly recognize who Kratos was. Redemption and Vengeance For breaking his oath, Ares ordered the Furies to hunt down the ghost of Sparta and force him to once again serve the god of war. Meanwhile, Kratos finds himself in the abandoned village of Kira, where he is trapped in an illusion of his home in Sparta, with his blood oath inhibiting memories of him killing his wife and daughter. The Furies' oathkeeper, Orcos, appeared before him and encouraged him to see past the illusion, using Lysandra's necklace and ring to break it. Although Kratos distrusted him, he followed Orcos's instruction to seek out Aletheia, the oracle at Delphi. She had earlier been captured by Pollux and Castor, but Kratos killed them both and took the amulet of Euroborus. He spoke with the dying oracle, who revealed Ares' plan to mold Kratos into a warrior capable of overthrowing Zeus, thereby allowing Ares to become the new king of Olympus. Kratos then traveled back to Kira, where he encountered Orcos once again. The Oath Keeper revealed that he is the son of Ares and Electo, one of the three Furies. Orcos explained Ares' intentions to Kratos. As Zeus had forbidden the gods from waging war on one another, Ares sought to breed a warrior capable of destroying Zeus in his stead, so that Ares may usurp him and rule Olympus for himself. Disappointed in Orko's complete lack of fighting skills, Ares disowned his son. Instead, Orko's became Oath Keeper of the Furies in an attempt to please his mother, Alecto. Ares saw in Kratos the makings of the warrior he needed to overthrow Zeus, and for that reason, he helped him against the barbarians that day. The murder of his family was meant to be one of three tests that would bind Kratos to Ares' will, the slaughter of one's enemies, the slaughter of innocents, and the slaughter of one's own family. Orcos did his mother's bidding as Oath Keeper and did not question her until Ares tricked Kratos into killing his family. Armed with this knowledge, Kratos took a ship to Delos. Once there, Kratos traversed a giant, ruined statue of Apollo, where he was attacked by all three Furies. In the ensuing confrontation, Kratos managed to cut off Majira's arm, but Electo used her power to capture him. Orcos appeared and freed Kratos, escorting him to another location, with Electo vowing that he would never succeed. After a perilous journey, Kratos used the amulet of Euroborus to fully restore the statue and retrieve the eyes from the lantern. But after completing the trials of Archimedes, he was once again ambushed by the Furies, who take him prisoner and steal both the eyes and the amulet. For two weeks, the Furies tortured Kratos in the prison of the damned. The Spartan eventually managed to free himself and pursued Majira through the prison. She and Tisiphone attempted to misdirect him with an illusion of a brothel. When he went to sleep with a woman inside, he spotted a ring on her finger and realized that it was a trick. He responded by tackling Tisiphone, 
but Majira intervened and insisted that Kratos belongs to her. Majira released insects into Aegean's hands and mouth, mutating them into insect-titan hybrids. Kratos retrieved the amulet of Ouroboros by killing Majira and the Hecatone Chires, only for Tisiphone to create an illusion of him being honored by the king of Sparta. Kratos saw through it and, progressing further into the prison, found the scribe of Hecatone Chires, the first mortal to ever be imprisoned by the Furies. The scribe revealed that the Furies were originally fair in their punishment, and became ruthless only under Ares' influence. Making his way to Electo's chamber, Kratos retrieved the Oath Stone from Tisiphone's pet bird, Daimon. Upon entering the chamber, the Furies project another illusion, this time of Kratos' home in Sparta. He is nearly taken in by this, for he saw his wife and daughter again. He came close to sleeping with the image of Lysandra, but soon notices the ring on her finger, revealing her to be Electo. She then tries to convince Kratos that he could live in this illusion forever if he rejoined Ares, however, noticing the eyes of truth hanging on her hip, he refused, preferring the truth to living a lie. Enraged, Electo drops the illusion and threatens to execute him if he would not serve Ares. Kratos breaks free of her sludge trap and snatches the eyes from Electo, who retreated back into her sanctum before she realized they were gone. Tisiphone joined Electo as Kratos advanced on the remaining Furies. They created an illusion of a massive whirlpool, with Electo transforming into a horrific sea monster. Using the eyes, Kratos broke through the Fury's illusions and forced Electo back into her human form. As he advanced on the Fury Queen, Tisiphone dispatched Daimon once more, but Kratos simply used the eyes to destroy the bird. He proceeded to strike Tisiphone, shapeshifting between the forms of the King and Kratos himself, as she belittled him. As he wrapped his hands around her throat, Tisiphone transformed into the form of Lysandra, causing Kratos to briefly hesitate. Tisiphone then changed into the village oracle, telling Kratos that his family was not there by mere chance the night he killed them before Kratos snaps her neck. With only Electo left, Kratos drew his blades. The Fury Queen coldly tells him that the truth would only bring him pain before he plunges his blades into her chest. With her last breath, Electo spitefully promises that her death would change nothing. With all three of the Furies dead, Kratos returned to his home in Sparta, where Orcos congratulated him on his victory. At the same time, he also revealed that he was made the new Oath Keeper, thereby maintaining Kratos' bond with Ares. He begged Kratos to give him an honorable death, as it would free them both from the god, to which Kratos initially refused, proclaiming that no more innocent blood should be spilled. Orcos' a continuing pleas ultimately forced Kratos' hand. With this act, Kratos experienced the first of many nightmares, Previously masked by his bond to Ares, this was the price he had to pay for breaking his oath. He also discovered his path to redemption through continual service to Olympus. Kratos proceeded to burn down his house, with the corpse of Orcos inside it.